Hi, this is Bill, and you are on Finest Travel Beat with Angela and Bill. Today we take you on board the Caribbean Princess, where we recently did a seven-night Eastern Caribbean sailing. As always, we will take you on a full tour of the ship, we'll point out some things of interest and things of importance, and also we'll give our opinion whether we liked the Caribbean Princess and things that could have been improved, and whether we think that the Caribbean Princess is the right fit for you. We hope you enjoy the rest of this video, and thank you for watching. Hi again, everybody, and thanks for watching. We're going to start up on Deck 17 and do a full walkthrough of the ship. Uh, as we go through, I will point out some things of interest. We'll talk to you about our experience on the Caribbean Princess that uh, we sailed on recently. Tell you what we liked, we, we thought could have been better, and at the end, as always, we'll give you our views. So, as I said, we're up on Deck 17 now. This area is called the Reef. This is the aft area of the ship. Up on top there, you'll see a walkway, which I'll show you a little bit later on. That goes to Skywalker's Nightclub. This area back here was pretty nice. It was uh, There's several decks here that look out over the aft area of the ship. And also the is a pool area down a couple of decks below. You'll see that. And then up on here, there are a couple of hot tubs as well. I'll give you some facts and figures about the Caribbean Princess. It was built in 2004. It had its last dry dock April 2022. It's a what I would call a medium-sized ship at 112,000 tons. The passenger capacity at double occupancy is about 3,100 passengers, but that can go up to almost 3,800 when there's third and fourth people in staterooms. It also holds a crew of about 1,200 people. Now, on our cruise, there were many more kids than is normal on a princess cruise. The cruise was the first week of July, so a lot of kids were out, and there is Angela walking by. So a lot of kids were out of school, and there were actually a 1,000 children on board, which did make it a little more crowded. But what I will say about the children on board a princess cruise is they're generally very well-behaved and very well-mannered, and while there were a lot of kids around, there weren't many young, young kids. And uh, they, like I said, they were well behaved and we didn't find any issues at all. As you look down there, you can see there's a kid's play area that some of the kids seem to like. We're going to walk up to deck 18 now, which is the sports court area. Now, Skywalkers is also technically on deck 18, which you'll see later, but that is not attached to it. This here and over there is Skywalkers. It looks like a bridge towards the back of the ship. That's really neat. Up here is a sports court area. It's a small sports court. Not a ton of activities to do there, but they have basketball and some other games on the sports court. Here we're looking down from the sports deck again, looking at Skywalkers and the wake behind the ship. Now, this is not our first Princess Cruise. We've been on the Regal Princess, and we were also on the Crown Princess. We have uh, another sailing on the Regal Princess, and the Caribbean Princess coming up as well. It's one of our favorite cruise lines. We'll tell you a little bit more about that towards the end, and you know, kind of the difference between Princess Cruise Lines and some of the other cruise lines. Now, we walk back down to Deck 16 here. Like I said, not much to see in the aft part on the pool deck but lots of really nice spots here that people took advantage of to sit down and have a coffee read a book have a couple of drinks and just kind of look out over the water back in here is another uh, kids play area i guess we would call it it looks like there's some uh, there's some ping pong tables this whole section on this deck is kind of the youth and the teen center they have an outdoor play area for the kids that you saw a little bit before, uh, a paddle pool, 
and some other things for kids. I didn't film too much of that. Again, try not to get too many children in the video for uh, obviously, as you understand, privacy purposes. But there is some activities for the kids back there to take advantage of. And back down to deck 15 now in the aft area. There is the outrigger bar. That bar seemed to be not too crowded, so it was pretty good. And right inside from there is the buffet area on the Lido deck. You see they had some dessert set up. I'll have a little bit more of filming of the Lido deck later on with some of the food options that they had. But just kind of want to show you the walkthrough. Again, those upper decks really don't connect to the midship of this, this ship. There is steam as seafood. What I'll mention about that is that's normally a specialty dining option. That, along with Plank's Barbecue on the other side, they were not open. They would just kind of rate more seating for the buffet. I don't know what the plans are. Princess just announced some changes to their Princess Plus and Princess Premier packages. I will probably address that in another video once I've kind of unpacked all of the changes that they have. But again, during our selling of those, would again, as you see, it's a world fresh marketplace, which is the buffet. I'll go into the food a little bit later in the video, but I just want to kind of show you a little bit of what they had. This was around lunchtime. We actually really enjoyed the buffet. We like to set up. Some people complain about it because it's rather than having it the length of the Lido buffet area it was kind of in a section where you had almost like three small rows you went through I thought it kind of worked out good it seemed to help the flow and uh and stop you from being kind of all jammed up but again we are on the Lido deck deck 15 we're gonna we're walking forward from the aft section into the uh, I guess what you would call the main pool area It's technically called the Calypso Reef and Pool. During our sailing, there was kind of one of the pools closed at all times. I guess it would do a maintenance. Over here is the Calypso Bar. Uh, one thing I'll mention is that the service at the bars was excellent. I don't think I ever waited more than a couple of minutes to uh, to get a drink or, or water or whatever we wanted. They were, were very good. There's plenty of drink service, and they really seemed to know what they were doing. Again, this pool at this point was closed. It was open earlier during the week, and the hot tubs are over here as well. There's two hot tubs over on this section, and up there is the movie screen where at night they do movies under the stars. If you've never been on a cruise ship where they do the movies, I highly recommend you do at night. It's a lot of fun. A lot of times they bring out cushions for the seats and blankets and They'll serve popcorn, and it's just a really nice, it's almost like a drive-in feeling. Uh, it, it was really good. And they did do a lot of the events that they had, uh, like ice carving and things like that, were done back here by the Calypso Pool. One deck up, we are on deck 16, which is, again, the sun deck. There is another little area up above the sun deck that you can explore as well that has some places where you can kind of lounge out and relax take in some sun as you can see here that's uh what a lot of people are doing in this area it was a beautiful day in the caribbean we'll continue walking forward on deck 17 the sun deck as you can see there we're looking down again on the lido deck the lido deck had the pools this pool was open they kind of alternated during the week i don't know whether they were doing any type of maintenance or whatever but being that one of the pools was closed this one stayed pretty packed and there's another secret pool well not really a secret pool but a pool most people don't know about i'll show you a little bit later on in the video angel and i tried to film as much of the ship as we could on these upper decks uh very often we'll start to do one of these videos and realize that we've missed stuff because we just some of the upper deck areas are a little disjointed right there you pass the trade winds bar that was a nice spot that kind of was where we hung out a lot during the week again great bartenders there uh the amazing job gonna walk into the spa area now 
one of the things that people had mentioned was that there was a sewage smell on the ship. The only place that we noticed it was kind of in this area outside of the spa. We did notice that during the cruise. I don't know what caused it, but there was definitely a little bit of a sewage smell there. Uh, not overwhelming, not terrible, but it was noticeable. And it was, uh, other than that, we didn't smell anything on the ship at all. We did not experience a spa on this trip. Uh, I'm not really a spa guy, nor is Angela, other than occasionally she'll go and get her hair, hair done or her nails done and pamper herself a little bit, depending on what we're doing and the type of mood. But uh, we didn't on, on this particular cruise. But this again, the spas on ships, a little pricey. But if you want to pamper yourself and be treated really nice and just completely relaxed, the spas, the massage area, which is on the other side, are excellent places to go. Forward of the spa area is a fitness center. As you can see, the hours there are 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. With unlimited food on the ships, uh, the spa areas and the gym seem to get a workout, pardon the pun. They had plenty of exercise equipment, bikes, machines, uh, treadmills they had some free weights some machines as well again didn't try not to film too much because uh trying to you know respect people's privacy as much as possible so didn't get a whole lot of uh of a view in here they do do exercise classes those are included to a portion i believe princess premier princess plus you get two princess premier is unlimited now, the salon was on the starboard side. This is on the port side. The port side has the spa where they actually do the massages, and they also have steam rooms and saunas and things of that nature. So they're kind of, uh, one's on one side, one's on the other. They're separated by that secret pool that I'm going to show you a little bit later on. I, you may have caught a little bit of it earlier. But here, as you can see, they have tea, they have water, some relaxation places, again, Spa, the salon, great place to relax on any cruise ship. Now, walking back aft on the sun deck is one of my favorite venues coming up there. You'll see at the end is called Hearts and Minds. Hearts and Minds, they had different meetings. They had Friends of Bill meetings. They had some small things. Kind of a card room, I guess, you could do in there. But it's mainly a wedding chapel, which I thought the name Hearts and Minds is pretty interesting because that's what we did to win or try to win the Vietnam War was to convince people that it was a good thing. I thought it was kind of ironic that the wedding chapel had that type of a connotation. Now, I know it's probably wedding of Hearts and Minds, but I just thought it was kind of ironic. Continuing up to the never-ending maze of decks, we're going to take you up to deck 17, kind of mid-sip-ish, and the sports deck. Up here, they have a very small putting green. As you can see, not really a whole lot going on up here. It was small. It's not really mini golf. It's more of a putting area. And again, some spots where people can kind of lay out. Plenty of that on the ship. There was plenty of places for people to lay out and as we'll show you the inside decks, plenty of places to just sit and kind of relax. Again, read a book or what have you. As I mentioned before, there were some absolutely amazing views up here. Very beautiful. And the most amazing view of all is coming up in a second. And that is my beautiful wife, Angela. Say hello. Back down on the Lido deck, we're going to take you through some of the, the included dining options slice which is the pizza place they had various uh they margarita pizza pretty much every day and tomato pizza every day but they had various other pizzas during the course of the cruise especially pizzas pineapple pizza if you're into that i'm not really into ham and pineapple on my pizza but whatever uh pizza we thought could have been a little better we weren't big fans of it we thought they were a little too heavy on Parmesan cheese, and we're not huge Parmesan cheese fans. 
as you saw there is another included uh, quick service dining option I guess quick service be the term for it which is the salty dog grill they have hamburgers hot dogs they had uh, some uh, tacos there as well pulled pork various other like kind of grab and go options uh, fries they had cheese fries those were very good and again uh, real real good real quick I will note that the place is closed, I believe it was 10 o'clock at night. So it was a little bit early. After that, you had to do room service. And uh, towards the end, we'll discuss some of the issues that we had on the cruise, some of the things we thought they could have improved. But uh, room service was one of them. It was a little bit slow. Over here is coffee and cones. Coffee and cones, is uh, they have specialty coffees there. And then also they have ice cream. That's where you get the ice cream. They serve you the ice cream. This is also where you get your premium desserts. Now, they change the packages around, but with plus and premium packages, generally there is some version of the specialty desserts that are included. Angel took advantage of a couple of those. I believe they have like eight or ten desserts total. There were only two available each night. Also, as you can see here, you can get other things like ice cream sandwiches and coffees, fraps. Honestly, I wish that they had made these specialty desserts available in the dining room. I think it made would have made more sense for them to do it that way. Okay, folks, we have you down now on the promenade deck, which is deck seven. The decks in between are all passenger decks. The promenade deck is home of the casino or the adult arcade, as uh, two of our favorite vloggers like to call it. We were there with our friends, Mike and Lisa, who are, um, they, they like to casino and they taught us a lot about slot machines and we're kind of experimenting a little bit with a little bit of gambling. We didn't go too crazy, but uh, kind of want to see what type of offers we get down the road. Uh, follow us in future videos and we'll let you know how that works out once we're home and any offers may start coming in. The promenade deck also has several shops, as you can see here. This is one of them. This is kind of their logo store where they had um, Stanley Bear, as you can see, different uh, T-shirts, jackets, pullovers, some uh, Christmas ornaments, coffee cups, your love boat merchandise. It was fairly small. I was a little disappointed. I usually collect the large ship models. All they had was the real small ones. And again, uh, the Regal Princess, we thought they had a lot better shopping area. Uh, we did do a video on Le Regal Princesses up on the channel as well. And if you want, you can take a look at that and compare. Next to it over here is the shop where you have uh, duty-free. There's a lot of duty-free shopping on here. Here is uh, different makeup and perfumes and beauty products and things of that nature is in this shop on deck seven now again as we always preach know your prices just because something is duty free and tax free doesn't necessarily mean that it's a great bargain especially on liquor we noticed that sometimes the pricing is actually cheaper in your local sam's club or costco than it is on a cruise ship so kind of know your pricing before you get on the ship or use your wi-fi package and look up the pricing on the starboard side here of the promenade deck, uh, by the way, this is also on the forward end of the ship, is the Kroonis Bar. The Kroonis Bar has a regular bar area there, and they also have a piano bar where they had a pianist who was kind of like a, uh, a sing-along slash comedian. He was, was very good. We enjoyed him. He put on some, some pretty good shows was very funny did a lot of crowd work and messed a little bit with the people going by and even the officers of the ship as they were walking by so this was a fun place to hang out could have used a little more seating over in this area because piano bars are always very popular venues i apologize in advance for some of the areas that kind of jumped around a little bit i am not a videographer or a video editor by any stretch of imagination i'm just Somebody that loves cruising and wants to bring as much of the experience to you as possible. Hopefully over time I'll get a little bit better with the camera work and a little bit better with the video editing.
Now this area over here is the Explorer's Lounge. The Explorer's Lounge, you can see they're having a art auction here. They were not thrilled with me filming any of that, so that's why I kind of should cut this short. But this is a place that they had not only the art auction, they had the Love and Marriage show. They had different trivias and bands there. Pretty decent size. Did get a little bit crowded, so you'll want to get there for a seat a little early, as it really is with any of the shows and the more popular shows. Definitely want to get there a little bit early if possible. Get yourself a nice spot. Grab a drink at the bar, maybe. Or, again, the waiter service is very good. We are entering, as we're walking aft, you can see on the, the left side of the screen is the photos. Again, uh, with different packages, with the premium package, the photos are all included. Makes it a pretty decent value at the pricing. Over on the right here is the Wheelhouse Bar. The Wheelhouse Bar is also another one of these venues where they hosted uh, mostly bands at night. There was a bar in here. It wasn't really open too much during the day, but they did have have music every night in here. Very good music, very very excellent jazz bands. If you're into jazz, that was uh, very enjoyable. And again, like all these spaces that aren't used during the day, great spot to sit and just relax or read a book. Next to that is Sabatini's. Now, Sabatini's is the Italian specialty restaurant. The other one is the Steakhouse, which I can't remember the name for the life of me at the second. But you'll see the Steakhouse in a little bit later on in the video anyway, and I'll remember the name then. Um, again, Angela and I tend not to film our meals or the food too much. One, food is subjective. Two, we prefer to enjoy our meals. And then three, we want to be respectful to the people around us. We do have some ideas in the future, but... For right now, we don't really show a whole lot of the food or our dining experience. Over on the right there, we passed was a, you can buy uh, photos, your pictures, photo accessories. They sell GoPros, GoPro accessories, some snorkel equipment, basically your photography stuff that you may need. Over here is where you can buy accessories for the medallions. Um, I've discussed medallions in other videos. I'll discuss a little bit more at the end what you can do with it. And what our thoughts were. Now we are going back into the Club Fusion area. I'm really not sure why they call it Club Fusion when it really kind of had more of a Western theme to it. Those kind of Club Fusion seemed a little bit, didn't really seem to fit the venue. And honestly, it kind of confused us a little bit. But again, this is a beautiful venue back here. Lots of nice seating. They did bingo back here this is a little bit probably one of the larger venues they had as you can see there they have uh line dancing they also did the loyalty reception here for members that are platinum and elite captain's club members and again this is now directly downstairs from here on deck six is the palm dining room that is one of the main dining rooms the only way you can get to it though is going on the stairs or the elevators at the very aft of the ship from deck seven or above. There's no way to get to it from other parts of deck six. So that was a little bit of a challenge. Back up here, just want to show you a little bit on deck seven. They call it the promenade deck for a reason because there is a beautiful wraparound deck where you can take in the ocean views. Again, nice spot to just kind of relax for a little bit. Plenty of seating out here as well. And the weather was beautiful during our cruise. It can get a little windy at times. So sometimes when it's too windy, they will close this down. We're back down now on deck six, the Fiesta deck. The Fiesta deck houses some of the other shops on the ship. Here we have... Uh, not so much logo gear, but more uh, clothing that you may need, uh, dre you know, dresses or uh, shirts. They did have some T-shirts, sunglasses, handbags, things like that, as you can see as we walk through. Kind of let you see what type of things they have. Again, we don't film a lot of the prices because prices can change. Also, to let you know that on this Fiesta deck is also the Coral Dining Room, which is one of the Again, the main dining room areas. 
you cannot get to the palm dining room from this area though because the kitchen or the galley is in between i did a quick little video it's up also up on the channel they let us actually go through the galley area after they did a cooking show so again there's a, it's a couple of minute video you may be interested in watching that it's also on the channel over here is guest services now some thoughts on guest services try not to go there on the last day of the cruise or the last morning of the cruise if there are any issues that you see on your bill take care of it right, right away check your folio often there are sometimes where there'll be small charges that shouldn't be there glitches in the systems or mistakes made by servers so take a look at your folio you can usually pull it up on your phone if you can't pull it up on your phone go to guest services ask them to print it out if you find any mistakes make sure you bring it to their attention right away they are excellent about resolving them. As you continue walking around, I uh, just want to take a second to ask you to hit that like button if you're getting value out of this video. Let us know in the comments below what you like about the video, what you think we could improve. And also hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. It's free and it means the world to us. It really helps us to know what we're doing right and it tells YouTube that more people should be shown our video content. So thank you in advance. And again, we'll take a few minutes at the end to give you some more of our opinions and, and some tips and some information about Princess as it was a little bit of a different cruise line than uh, most of the big threes, shall we say, of Carnival, Royal Caribbean, and Celebrity. Take you back here. We are passing the Future Cruise Center. Not a bad spot. Uh, to book your future cruises you can book it on board and you can also continue to work with your current travel advisor if you like and surprise surprise we found out the name of the steakhouse it's the crown grill again we we did have dinner here we had dinner with our friends mike and lisa it was excellent the wait was fantastic we ran into him several times afterwards on the cruise up in the sanctuary area tell you a little bit about the sanctuary at the end as well uh, food is fantastic. I had, I believe, I had the ribeye. Uh, they were absolutely great. The, the scallops were good. Everything was, was just really, really enjoyable at the steakhouse. Again, uh, this is an upcharge. It's not included, but uh, there are with the different packages available. You can get one or two nights specialty dining included, and uh, that's that's always a nice, uh, nice, nice treat for us. Now, directly across from the Crown Grill is the Shore Excursion Desk. You can book Shore Excursions through here, or if you have any issue with your Shore Excursions, speak to them. They're very helpful. Shore Excursions is something I plan on doing some other videos on. We did not do any ship Shore Excursions in St. Thomas. We just got off and went up to Paradise Point. And in St. Thomas, we took a taxi over to Maho Beach, to watch the planes land at the Princess Juliana Airport. We'll have other videos on those up on the channel in uh, in a short period of time. Again, this is all on deck six, which is the Fiesta deck. We continue to walk forward on deck six. All the way forward on the ship is a Princess Theater. Hey, does anybody recognize what building that is? If you could tell us what building that is, let me know in the comments below. Some nice pictures over here. And again, walking all the way through here on deck six is kind of the uh, an entrance to the Princess Theater. We're going to go through the Churchill Lounge. It was probably going to be a little, it's very dark in there. That's a cigar lounge where you can uh, smoke cigars. They sell cigars, I believe, there as well. And had a nice bar. Uh, a quieter area, kind of hard to find if you weren't looking for it. There, there are some nooks and crannies on the ship. And the church launch it open from the starboard or the port side of the ship. Now, located directly forward of Churchill's is the main theater, the Princess Theater. Uh, it's actually the lower level entrance here. There's an upper level entrance one deck up. I uh, didn't film the theater while it was empty. It's a pretty standard size uh, theater 
But I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a taste of the type of entertainment was on the ship. I'll show you a little bit of one of the production shows, which we, we really enjoyed. Uh, the entertainment comedian wasn't great, I'll be quite honest. And uh, the shows were a little inconsistent, but this particular one was excellent. And uh, we'll just let you hear a little bit of it before we continue our review and tell you our thoughts on the ship and some ideas at the end. that show and hopefully you did as well that little clips we showed now we take you back down to deck five this is a plaza deck it is a fairly small deck right here they call it the princess art gallery it's kind of where they keep the artwork that they're going to put up for auction at some point uh, angela and i did get bit by the auction bug a few years back when we first moved into our home bought some nice pieces i think we got a pretty good deal on them because we kind of knew what we were looking at I knew what we were looking for, but still dropped way more money than we wanted to. So uh, Angela doesn't allow me in art auctions anymore. Anybody else out there spent money on art auctions or bought art on a cruise ship? Let us know in the comments below. Now out here is the Piazza. The Piazza is one of my favorite areas. They have here the International Cafe, which is great for grab and go coffee, pastries. They have little sandwiches at night. They have, uh, I don't think they call them McMuffins, but basically they're Rick McMuffins. Uh, again, pastries, desserts. This is open 24 hours, so it's a really great option for late night or early morning. And we usually hit this up when we're doing an excursion or getting off the ship early, but we don't want to sit down in a dining room or uh, a deal at the buffet. Now, if you've seen our other video on the Regal Princess, you'll know we spent a lot of time down here in the Piazza area. This being a little smaller ship, there wasn't quite as much seating. There was still a lot of stuff going on. They had officers versus guests in different trivia and games. They had piano players, violinists, uh, a whole host of entertainment going on here all the time. Over here is the, uh, the Good Spirits Bar, which was kind of the spot that we hung out on the Regal Princess a lot. We weren't over here too much again. Service was great, but just not a lot of seating, as it being a little bit of a smaller ship. Uh, back in behind here also is the island dining room. Again, that's uh, behind there. You can't go further back because I believe it's uh, a galley back behind the island dining room as well. More shops, always more shops. Uh, over here is the Internet Cafe and the Library. They have computers that you can use on board if you have the internet package. Again, I'm going to have to do a video on uh, the Princess Plus Plus and Premier packages once things have kind of settled in. A lot of changes with it lately. Uh, feel free to drop any questions in the comments. I'll answer them as best I can. But again, back in the library here, they had uh, games, Trivia Pursuit, Chess, various games that you could, uh, could use, books you could borrow. And then uh, plenty of internet workstations and some empty workstations too. Uh, as you might know, Angela and I both work on the ships quite often. We usually bring our laptops. So this would be a nice spot if the room's a little bit tight or both of us want to work. We can just, you know, set up in one of these workstation spots over here. And it being right next to the internet cafe, that's an added bonus. 
Continuing on in the Piazza area over here, you can see that there is a store that sells some uh, some drinks, some chocolates, and various items that you may have gotten at home, like uh, Dramamine and Huggies and razors, shampoo, things along those lines. The Piazza area in general, oh, bring show you bring your sunscreen from home. Sunscreen is outrageously expensive on cruises and on uh, on the islands in general. But getting back to what I was going to say, there was plenty of stuff going on. One of the things that they had was uh, steel drums, and you can see people just so friendly on cruise ships. But the steel drums, they had about a dozen of them set up, and you could they gave you instructions, and at the end, everybody played a tune, which was just a ton of fun. Uh, again, always tons going on in cruise ships, and just really nice people, really amazing, amazing staff from all around the world. You learn so much from them. They learn so much from us. It's just a wonderful, wonderful experience. Finishing up on the Piazza deck is Vines, which is their wine bar that they had. Uh, wines by the glass, wines by the bottle that you could purchase. And uh, that was an area that a lot of people uh, kind of hung out in as well. Again, you see, everybody's friendly and waving and smiling. But as we go on, I'm going to show you the secret area that people did not kind of know about and it is a pool located back by the sanctuary now for those of you that don't know the sanctuary is an area that has cabanas that you can rent for the day there's lawn chairs that you can rent i am going to do another video explaining all of that we did rent a clamshell and we also rented one of these cabanas for the day and that was a great experience again I'll do another video on it it's just too much to put into one and there's a lot to know about how to reserve one but as you look at the sanctuary area there's a pool area that's located outside the spa and outside of the salon that people think is part of the sanctuary area but it is not this is the pool down here there's a hot tub this area was kind of squirreled away. Most people did not know about it until later in the cruise. It wasn't deep at all either. It was, I think, four feet deep and just a fantastic pool. Now we're going to take you up to deck 17 slash 18. Now, this is Skywalker's nightclub. You can only get up here by using the very far aft elevators, and that said only elevators that will go up here are the ones that are on the far port and far starboard side. During this week, one of them was out, so there was only one elevator going up and down. But you take the elevator to deck 17, and then you go on this really, really cool, I guess people movie we call it, that's a slow-moving kind of escalator with no steps ride up to deck 18 into Skywalker's nightclub. Now, Skywalker's Nightclub is another one of those great spots on the Princess Cruise where during the day you can you know, relax, read a book. If you're working, if you're doing stuff on a laptop like, like I do, um, that's, it's a great spot for it. As a matter of fact, we saw them doing some training up here. This is also in general if you are a Platinum or Elite member on the Caribbean Princess, uh, the Captain's Club. This is where they'll have the evening happy hour where uh, they'll have some uh, hors d'oeuvres, as I, I think I have some film of that right here, showing some hors d'oeuvres, but just fantastic, fantastic, amazing views. And the venue at night turns into a nightclub. Now, the nightclub on board was, uh, discos aren't really my scene. Um, it, they had a DJ, they had a lot of music, um, plenty, plenty of dancing. We don't usually go up to it. Uh, we were with a couple of friends, so I did check it out a couple of nights and confirm that the disco is not really for me anymore at this point. Uh, oh my God, these chicken lollipops. And then they had these this pretzel bread. It was kind of a pretzel. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, wish they would have had that not just before dinner, but again, you know, this is all the cruise lines have something that they kind of do for, for loyalty, but. What a great spot. It's almost like a bridge on the back of the ship. So it was really fantastic. Before we give you our final thoughts and kind of wrap things up, again, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you've gotten value out of this. It really helps us out. 
and it helps other people out by pointing them in our direction. If you like the video, hit the like button and uh, leave a comment below. If you've cruised on Princess, let us know and let us know your thoughts on Princess Cruise Lines. Let's start off with the things we think they could have done a little bit better. Uh, the ship itself is an older ship. And while it was in dry dock in April of 2022, uh, definitely could have used a little TLC. We were a little disappointed that one of the pools was closed most of the time. There were some areas that probably could have used a, a fresh coat of paint and some wood trim that could have been uh, replaced. Also, the smallest shower at sea. Check out our video on that. It is just tiny, tiny, tiny. And then the main dining room uh, wait staff was a little inconsistent. First couple of nights, we had a waiter that we really weren't thrilled with. He wasn't very attentive and kind of the timing was all down, but it was made up because the last couple of nights we had Vanjie, who was absolutely fantastic and one of the best waiters we have ever had at a restaurant ever. Uh, Vanjie, I hope you watch the video. If you do, please, you know, give us a shout out in the comments. Well, we try to keep these videos to about 30 to 40 minutes, so we're up at that time now. There is going to be a lot of stuff that we're going to address in future videos regarding medallion class and the princess experience in general. But for now, let's, uh, let's call it a wrap. And on behalf of Angela, thank you for watching, and come join us on our next adventure. Bye-bye, everybody.